Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw. I'm here at the Iberostar Gran Bavaro in the Dominican Republic in Punta Cana. And I'm here with uh, Gloria Flusha and Sabina Flusha. And we're going to talk with them a little bit about not really necessarily this resort. We'll be talking to you later about that. But we're going to talk about really the whole concept for the company, which is really an amazing one considering, you know, everybody's focused on sustainability, but uh, both of you really live up to that. So we're going to talk to them about that and more on Insider Travel Report. First off, uh, let's talk a little bit about Iberostar Hotels and Resorts. Uh, what does it encompass today? So Iberostar Hotels and Resorts is a family business. Right. Uh, we're Spanish, 100% private, mm -hmm. and we have more than 60 years of experience in hospitality and travel. Okay. And currently we, we own and manage more than 100 hotels, mm -hmm. four and five stars, in 16 different countries. Yeah, it is amazing, and you've been growing like crazy. And, uh, and so, so basically, what are, what, are, what are some of the countries that you're in? Um, Spain, Mexico, Brazil, Dominican Republic, a um, lot of variety from the 19 countries. And there's even one in New York, if I recall. You have a, a, a resort here. But, you know, we're, we know you as for the all-inclusive resorts that our, our, our viewers uh, book uh, a lot of uh, all over the place. Now, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, you have a strong commitment to that all-inclusive market. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, uh, sure. We have all-inclusive market mainly here in the Caribbean. In Europe, we have both. Okay. So we also have um, breakfast and dinner half board okay. and all inclusive we have both but we have it very clear that for us quality is the main driver both quality and sustainability so when you look at our all inclusive resorts uh, you will always see consistency in quality and sustainability now, so it's, yes. it's a premium experience. It's a premium all-inclusive experience. Well, this is this this particular resort. Your grand is your top level, and then I, I'm staying at the Coral, which is really nice as well. And so you have sort of go across. But but you know they are wonderful resorts both here and in, and in Mexico. Now let's talk a little bit about that commitment to sustainability because I, I think you're I, I I hate to say use the word unique, but you really have made a strong strong commitment to sustainability. And tell us a little bit about why you did that. So I, I believe it's part of our family's DNA. It has always been like that since our history. And we just wanted to integrate that every time more in our family business. 80% um, of our properties are by the ocean. Right. So that's why we chose the commitment to the oceans. Mm -hmm. And since 2017, we started a movement that just helped us encompass all of this. And, and that movement was trying to solve the major problems of the oceans. Mm -hmm. And again, integrating it a lot in the experience that our clients can find within the Iberia Star properties. Well, in fact, I experienced it yesterday because you have uh, the Coral Lab here, which is pretty unique, right? Yes, the Coral Lab is, is something unique and we're planning to open more Coral Labs in different countries because coastal health is one of our main action lines in this uh, sustainability movement we're promoting. Well, I know, and that's so you can tr maybe try to grow coral back in some of these reefs. And, and I saw uh, firsthand what you were trying to do. Now, talk. let's look a little more in depth about this Oceans program and some of the, the prongs of your, your program. And, and, and I think there are three things that you're, you're, you're focused on. Yes, for sure. So the, 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 we like to call it a movement because it has a beginning date, but it doesn't have a, a due date. And the movement is based in three pillars. The first one started as the elimination of single-use plastic to tackle marine pollution and it, we became a company free of single-use plastic last year in 2020 with all the complexities of the times. The second pillar, uh, sorry, the first pillar then evolved to circular economy. So we're focusing in circularity, how we use materials. Uh, we have an intention to become free of waste by 2025 as well. Okay. And going into the second pillar, the second pillar is based on seafood and tackling as well the problematic that the oceans have of overfishing. Mm -hmm. So we want to maintain the gastronomical excellence that we have and the quality, but we also want to have a traceability in the product we offer our clients. Mm -hmm. So it's an engaging experience where they can try new things, but all of our seafood will be traceable by 2025. We've accomplished a 41% of traceability right now by 2021, and we try to continue until 2025 as mentioned. And then the third pillar is coastal health. 
Coastal health is again a way that we want to prove that a tourism operation doesn't necessarily go in contradiction with improving the coastal health of the ecosystems where we operate. So we have a team of 10 scientists working towards this and trying to improve the health, uh, doing coral restoration programs, using mangrove as well for carbon compensation. Right. And all of that, once more, we want to generate that awareness with our client. We want them to take that back as well after they have the experience with Iberostar and always learn and engage more with the oceans. Well, that's a wonderful program. Now, how do you apply that really physically to a property like this? Yes, I wanted to add the fact and highlight the fact that this movement is 100% integrated in our business model. Right. It's not something we do aside. It's completely integrated. So going to a question, it has meant transforming, transforming many of the processes. And um, it's been a movement we're trying to we're promoting for the past five years, five to six years. So a lot of education, a lot of internal communication to our people. And we're seeing that people are very, they feel very proud of this moment. So they're really willing to improve and willing to learn and move forward. And it's meaning changes in, in, in F&B, one of the food and beverage, changes in the Star Camp, for example, that's the entertainment for our kids. We're also introducing that movement in the activities and so on. Changes in, in our spas, in everything we do. It's really 100% integrated. You're leading the way in this, but how, how do you think you can get other companies to follow? So I think there's when you try to generate a movement like this, you are aware that there's a lot of collection, collective action required. And you're also doing it with the intention to generate a momentum within the sector. Mm -hmm. So uh, collaborating again is very important for us. And we've joined groups uh, like the WTTC Sustainability Committee in order to generate roadmaps for the sector to follow using the resources as best as possible and generating as well an interaction of best practices. Uh, we're also members of the high-level panel for sustainable ocean economy, mm -hmm. the Tourism Action Coalition. We were co-hosts. And from that, again, roadmaps came in order how the industry can take the better steps and be more efficient in the way they accomplish this. A last group of interaction we've had is with the World Economic Forum, right. uh, the Global Futures uh, Tourism Action Coalition as well. And they're fantastic best practices as changes just came along and ideas and generating as many roadmaps and also motivation for others to follow and to guide. No, absolutely, and that's really important. I think uh, I, we were talking earlier that I'm going to be down at the WTTC meeting in Cancun, and you're going to either be there physically or or, or virtually. But uh, and I think that's going to be a big topic at World Travel and Tourism Council, right? Sure, uh, yeah. sustainability is definitely on the table, and it's something that uh, many companies companies worry about, and it's a must to bounce back better. For, for with no doubt. Have you had any interest from other companies to saying you know to look at your program and how you're doing? Yes, for sure. And in, in that aspect, we're always very transparent. And again, it's a question of collective action amongst all. And the more f uh, momentum we can generate, the better. There's been a lot of interest in the way, for example, we were our procurement team were buying alternatives to compostable products when we were trying to eliminate the plastics. Um, other companies were trying to understand how we were trying to accomplish the seafood traceability. Uh, we're members uh, of the global seafood traceability dialogue in order to generate through blockchain as well a traceability on that so there was interest of other companies and also I think the education is key right. um, so there were a lot of questions on how we've educated our staff how we've been able to generate that awareness and also last but not least how we incorporated that with the clients because at the end we're all doing this for the tourism experience and for our clients to engage as much as possible and take that awareness with them with the indulgement of a vacation that they will have at Iberostar. And that is key and uh, of course the other thing here is we are now emerging thank goodness uh, from this pandemic and and you have opened up a, a lot of your properties are pretty much open you had a couple more opening up uh, in, in later this month here uh, at, in, in Punta Cana uh, but how do you how how do you use you a focus on sustainability at this time with the pandemic a lot of people think it's an opportunity but a lot of people say you know this is hard hard to focus on both the pandemic and sustainability so how would you how, how do you address that well we have it very clear that sustainability is even more important right now we understand it's the only way to move forward right. and it's uh, we envision this responsible tourism model that is part of our DNA as my sister was mentioning so we really believe it's the only way just mm -hmm. to give you an example we developed a program called how we care and it has to do with the safety measures to ensure safety for our guests and our staff and the employees and this uh, this 
program consists of more than 300 measures um, that are completely aligned with our wave of change movement. That okay. means with our circularity policies and so on, we've done it with a medical advisory board that has helped us to develop the, that program. So always with sustainability and quality at the center of what we do. So it's just an example of how we have really incorporated that and that we understand it's the only way. No, and it is the only way, and I think more companies are starting to realize that. I mean, it's I've been in the business about 30 years now, and we talked about sustainability and eco eco travel and all kinds of things, but you know, people didn't really pay attention. But that's why I was so uh, uh, really impressed by your program, which really is really at the heart of your company. I would think, right? Yes, it certainly is. And and coming back to your prior question, when you're going through critical times, that's when you have to stick more true to your purpose. And that was a very powerful message as well to our people, to our staff, uh, to all the stakeholders, that despite the pandemic, we didn't stop. We looked forward. Um, we invested in what we thought was important in the long term, taking care as well of the critical short terms. And that for us has been very important. And it's not a trend anymore. It's something that you need to engrave in, in the way you do things, as Sabina was saying. It's strategic to us. It's at the core of our business model. And we feel that that's going to be the identity of Iberostar. No, and it really has become that due to your efforts. Now, where do we go from here? I mean, you have these programs, you just keep advancing. Where do you, where do you see it yourself in five to ten years with this? Well, as my sister is saying, this is a movement, not a project, so right. it has no due date. And we have announced several commitments, like um, becoming waste-free by 2025. Mm -hmm. So we're striving to get to that to that uh, to achieve that goal and commitment and we want to be carbon neutral by 2030 so it's never going to stop um, we're like every day taking serious steps and what is important is that we do it in a very serious way and rigorous way mm -hmm. and with the science community together that's what makes this this movement unique because it's uh, it's ourselves as a company together with the science community hand by hand it's the only way to do that no and i would agree totally because as, as you move forward and you want to achieve that goal by 2030 now anything else you'd like to tell we go out to about eighty-five thousand travel advisors in the u.s uh, and obviously they're going to be talking to their customers their clients about what the iberia star experience is so anything you want to tell them about uh, that experience and how crucial this sustainability effort is uh, that they can tell their clients I think that um, the essence of Iberostar will be the same. It's about quality. It's about our service. It's it's about the way we nurture our clients as well. But they will engage and indulge in their vacations while also doing good to the oceans. And I think that is the mixture we want to accomplish in our agenda till 2030, as my sister was saying, with all the objectives we have and also ongoing because this doesn't have a due date. It has become part of what Iberostar is and part of the Iberostar experience for the clients when they come to our hotel. No, absolutely. So anything else you want to add to that and uh, or tell, or tell our travel advisor viewers? Well, I wanted to thank you for this opportunity, James, because for us it's a great opportunity to be able to talk to the trade and to convey our main messages right. mm -hmm. because the trade has been and will always be strategic for us. And we, we want to make sure we're close to the trade and we can, you know, be aligned with the trade and make sure that they understand our customer experience and what we deliver. Yeah. So we're very proud to be here. Well, I want to thank both of you for taking the time and, and thank you for you know, hosting me down here at this wonderful resort. I've been to your resorts in Mexico, but never to this one. Uh, uh, it is an amazing property, uh, the, the Grand here and then the new Coral, uh, coral level. Uh, and, and you have so, many, so much more to offer here. And I did get a chance to see the Coral Lab, which was really fascinating, and speak to some of the, the people working on that project. So again, thank you so much. And again, thank you for sharing your ideas and your goals with us. Thank you, James. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.